Around a year ago, I released my strong reaction to the trailer for Violet Evergarden the movie, and to summarize, the main source of my anger was the fact that Major Gilbert was still alive, mainly because I felt it rendered Violet's journey to accept that he was never coming back as pointless. That was back when I used to write in size 13 font, my scripts were only 3 pages long at most though, so maybe I was being irrational by jumping to conclusions based off of a 1 minute trailer. And even though I'm 2 years late, I finally sat down to watch the movie and came to the conclusion that I was right and wrong in some ways, but mostly right. I enjoyed the movie overall. There were some emotionally engaging side plots in it, the animation was gorgeous, and the atmosphere that the cinematography and sound design created drew me straight into the film's world. But the Violet and Gilbert plotline, even if it's okay on its own, feels like trash compared to the rest of the movie, and especially the original anime. And I was surprised at how emotionally unmoved I was by its conclusion. I know from that statement, some people will get the idea that I'm one of those pretentious critics who doesn't cry at the stupid weeaboo shows, but the way that fiction can transmit emotions from one person to another is probably my favorite thing about it. And yes, I do cry at the stupid weeaboo shows, even if I don't want to admit it. I like to cry when I watch movies, or listen to music, or read books, Books, or engage with any form of art, and I think cinema is a particularly powerful vehicle for conveying emotions as it combines all of these different art forms into one product. And there were some moving moments in Violet Evergarden the movie. The story is told through the framing device of the granddaughter of Anne Magnolia as she searches for Violet Evergarden, the doll who wrote her great-grandmother's letters to her daughter. I know, there's a lot of mothers and daughters to keep track of. And I thought the framing device itself was a little more complicated than it was worth, but watching Anne grow up with her mother's letters was was very sweet. It was only shown for a few minutes in a montage though, so it didn't have a long-lasting impact. Don't worry, we're gonna do basically the same plotline, except now it's the child who has the terminal illness because Violet Evergarden hates us. Ironically, the storyline focusing on the side character Eurus was the best part of the film. Despite being a poor teenage boy dying in a hospital, Eurus manages to hire Violet to write letters for his family for when he passes that will express what he can't say to their faces. Throughout the movie, we get moments of Violet working with Eurus as he comes to terms with his approaching death and learns to be open with his family through the letters. Near the end of the film, we get a heartbreaking scene of Eurus passing away. Violet wasn't able to finish his letter to his friend Lucas, but Iris arrives in time to let him call Lucas before he takes his final breath. Eurus's parents read their letters, yet the hardest one to read is for Eurus's little brother, who lights up at the letter but is too young to understand that his brother won't be waking up. Despite the tragedy of the situation, it ends on a heartwarming note as Eurus's family appreciates their son's letters and the life he had. I wasn't expecting such a straightforward plotline to be so impactful, but I have to give it to the writers, voice actors, and animators for really making the best of this brief plotline. I say this to to highlight that I don't think Violet Evergarden the movie is completely terrible and that it's not incapable of making me cry. Unfortunately, the rest of the film is focused on Violet's journey to reunite with Gilbert and this storyline left me feeling unengaged and annoyed by the end. From the very beginning of this plot, Violet's characterization feels slightly off. She struggles to socially connect with Hodgins and the other employees of the auto memory doll service, despite the progress she had made since the end of the anime and the specials that followed it. All that we're shown of Violet is her being weighed down by her grief over Gilbert's death, and again, it feels like she's reverted back to the beginning of the original anime. Still, it's true that battling grief isn't a one and done process, and the movie could tell an interesting story by demonstrating the long-term effects the death of a loved one can have, even if it is kind of similar to Violet's character arc in the anime. The main issue I take with the film's portrayal of this conflict is how completely dependent Violet is on the Major's presence. There's nothing wrong with her still feeling upset that Gilbert is gone and looking back on her life with him, but when she talks about how he was the only one who taught her how to live, and there's nothing she can do to separate herself from him, it feels like she's completely forgotten everything she's learned about fulfilling Gilbert's final wish by living as her own person. This point may seem a bit overcritical on its own, but Violet gives multiple speeches similar to this one about how completely dependent she is on Gilbert, and it serves as a warning for the even messier writing that's to come. Violet continues to deny social opportunities with her friends because of her obsession with Gilbert. When she goes to leave flowers on his mother's grave, 
she runs into Dietfried, who apparently did remember what he learned in the anime as he's much kinder to her than before. He still somewhat coldly tells her to just forget about Gilbert, but she insists that his memory will never leave her. Later in the movie, Dietfried tells Violet that his family's getting rid of their old boat, and it has some old items of Gilbert's if she'd like to take any, to which Violet passionately insists she's coming. Again, while there's nothing wrong with her feeling an emotional attachment to keepsakes of a late loved one, why do they keep portraying this desire as if Violet literally can't live without Gilbert when that was the lesson of her original character arc. Violet continues to neglect time with her friends in order to connect with Gilbert's past, much to Papa Hodgen's concern. If I ever have kids someday, then I really hope it's a boy. And on an unexpected side note, this film spends a good amount of time developing Dietfried's character. While on the family ship, Dietfried explains how he resented his father for trying to force him into joining the military so Gilbert made sure to become a strong military leader to keep their dad from getting angry at them. Dietfried admits regret over how cruel he was to Gilbert, even when his brother sacrificed his own future to keep their father from punishing him. Violet and Dietfried even strengthen their relationship by the end of their whole interaction, in a turn that makes Dietfried much more sympathetic than he was in the original show. At least someone's developing as a character, huh? Violet's already chaotic world is thrown upside down whenever Hodgins discovers a letter that looks like it's in Major Gilbert's handwriting, meaning there's the possibility that he's been secretly alive this whole time. Yeah, I mean, he only had both his arms blown off and an entire stone building collapse on top of him, then managed to stay completely hidden from anyone who could possibly know him for years. But sure, he's fine. He's been alive this whole time. It's fine. Okay, I won't harp on this point anymore because this series is built on the premise of a 14-year-old killing machine being forced to serve in the army, so it's not exactly realistic all the time. While Violet and Hodgins make their way across the ocean, we learn that Gilbert serves as a teacher on an island called Ecarte under the pseudonym of Jill Bear. Are you just trying to shatter my suspension of disbelief? Hodgins and Violet arrive at Gilbert's house and Hodgins struggles to get Violet to stay outside while he makes sure that everything's okay with the Major. Hodgins is shocked to find Gilbert standing inside the school building. Gilbert explains that he miraculously survived the building explosion but was sent to a hospital run by a monastery because he didn't have his tag. Instead of going home, he wandered the area before settling down on an island, and never notified the military, even with the knowledge that Violet was alive and waiting for him the whole time. Obviously, Hodgins is ready to beat up Gilbert over this, but Gilbert insists that he did it for Violet's sake, which is somewhat understandable considering how the unhealthy power dynamic in their relationship left her emotionally stunted. Even when Hodgins tells Gilbert Violet's here and wants to see him though, Gilbert refuses and asks him to let him live a new life on the island. Hodgins dejectedly relays this information to Violet, but her reaction is so strong that he has no choice but to bring her to the Major anyway. Standing outside his door in the pouring rain, Violet begs Gilbert for answers about why he left, yet he can only say that he feels too ashamed of how he abused her as a child soldier to face her again. Violet eventually realizes that there's nothing left she can do, and runs off crying. Hodgins goes super sane on Gilbert, but unfortunately his powers don't activate. As you'd expect, Violet is an emotional wreck after this. Surprisingly, she ultimately decides that knowing the Major is alive and safe is enough for her, and hands one of his students a letter for him before heading for the ship home. It seems like the story is going to end with Violet returning home and Gilbert refusing to leave the island, but Dietfried suddenly shows up to, again, be the unexpected best character of the movie. All I want to do is stuff you into a suitcase and drag you off to see Violet so you can fix this mess that you've made. He confronts Gilbert about hiding away on the island and leaving everyone to mourn his supposed death yet assures him that he will make up for his past mistake and carry on the Bougainvillea's duty to the military so that Gilbert can choose his own path. I can't believe I said that right on the first try. <laughs> Gilbert receives the final letter Violet wrote for him, in which she thanks him for teaching her everything she knows in life, prompting him to race towards the shoreline in the hopes that he can catch Violet before she leaves. She casually jumps off a boat, and the two of them share a tearful reunion as they promise to be together from now on. This moment did make me feel emotional, but it felt so distant to me at the same time. The idea of reuniting with someone after so many years was heartwarming, but I didn't have any characters to connect it to. What Violet and Gilbert had become was foreign to what I had known them to be. I'll be honest, I still don't know entirely why this moment just felt wrong to me. Maybe it was the fact that even after Gilbert explained to Violet that she needs to recognize the dark and abusive circumstances surrounding their relationship, she vehemently denies his rightful claims that he's not a great person. Maybe it's that Violet's been reduced to a shell of her former self, barely even able to face the Major as she profusely apologizes for existing. To add insult to injury, Violet's 
supposedly abandons her friends in Leiden to live with Gilbert on the island. And further adding to the bitter taste in my mouth, this whole ending implies that Violet and Gilbert are in love and living together as a couple. It seems like for the majority of people though, my criticisms are actually strengths of the movie. For fans of Violet Evergarden the movie, this is the satisfying conclusion they've been waiting for that caps off Violet's journey in navigating her grief while still giving her a happy ending. I suppose it all depends on how you view Violet's relationship with Gilbert, and I find a lot of problems with the way this movie romanticizes it and rewards Violet for holding fast to her unhealthy obsession in the end. Violet was only 14 years old when she was forced to join the military, and despite his best efforts to show her kindness and give her a normal life, Gilbert still willingly allowed her to be used as a human weapon and subjected her to horrors of war that would permanently traumatize her. No matter what way you look at it, this relationship is not a healthy one, but in the original anime, there was a sense that Gilbert redeemed himself for his mistakes by telling Violet to live her own life and ensuring her freedom after his death. But I lost the sympathy I had for him when the movie revealed that Gilbert lived in seclusion because he didn't want to confront his past, even with the knowledge that he was leaving all of his loved ones to mourn his death. So I find it strange for the film to imply that Violet should give up her life on Leiden where she is surrounded by lots of people who love and support her, to live in solitude with Gilbert, and then imply that they're a romantic couple, which is very strange considering Violet was a teenage girl and Gilbert was a fully grown man when they first met. I understand you can look past some of this weird writing and appreciate some of the better parts of Violet's character arc in the movie, or even focus on the actually good writing, like with Yuris' storyline, but I feel like we're settling. The Violet Evergarden anime told such a well-written story about healing from grief and learning to express your feelings in a healthy way, with a variety of shorter plotlines exploring the different kinds of love seamlessly weaved in. And I don't understand why this movie would be willing to sacrifice all of that impactful character growth that really stuck with a lot of people who fight against depression and trauma themselves for a soap opera romance that I can't even root for. And look, I know I'm an overly critical and negative YouTuber, but it's always important to have a positive mindset. So, deep freed, I'm proud of you. You spent every second of your limited screen time in this movie growing as a person, and I actually like you now. This is the only way I know how to speak to others. With that, thank you all for watching. I look forward to the comments because it seems like I'm the only person who feels this way. I'll see you all next time. Bye.